this at him again. Wow, this is like throwing a drop? Oh yeah. Dude, what? <laughs> what? How do you name a deer like that? Good start. <laughs> good, good start. Like the end of his beam went down, but I think he just his head down. <laughs> what? Does he have a flyer coming off that side? <laughs> It does. And a drop down on the Double. other side. Double. Those are off his <laughs> neck. There's a good picture. Oh my. Look at that thing. I wonder what that is. Dude, that's double drops. Dang. I don't think there's something there's on the some other side. There's antler there though. There's some mass. He's got some growing left. Almost looks like, <laughs> did you see a second ago? Almost looks like he could split this it almost looks like he could split this two up mm -hmm. here. He might, he might he might have just passed Eddie on the hit list. No, don't you say that. I think he did. There's like multiple benches, so you got but this shit even. And the trails are I mean it's sweet in there and there's a perfect tree and you can just let your whatever probably into that ditch. Some of these spots, if this ditch is okay you know I'd almost have two different entry routes so like if you come in the afternoon or like a different entry versus exit you come in the afternoon I'd stay up top and hunt like let's say it's right here and when I then pile out you get out in the field then you drop, drop down, down and go yeah. out that way that's what we've talked <clears> about <throat> for that for that back stand because I mean that's a if you if you wanted to make the walk, See, that's what would be tough. It'd <laughs> I mean, be easier on a cove like this where you just have yeah shorter stretch. But it seems like all the killer spots are though. Oh, it's always like that. Oh, for sure. But I, there's enough bedding all around here that all these coves will probably be solid. Just kind of have to look at them. The other thing to look at too. I mean, obviously we talk about this being a obvious crossing spot but find some of these lower spots where the deer might shoot from here to here you know what I mean like cruising where they're not jumping one ridge over connecting. yeah like dead across a lot of times it's gonna be in the narrower spots or where it starts to or it's a little bit lower so like it almost looks like right here it starts to drop off from this flat level where it's a little bit lower it'll be a little bit lower Something like this would be ideal for what I was talking about earlier, where you come in afternoon, hunt that, Dick, drop, drop, just drop straight yeah, down. Drop That's down a pretty short drop right there. And potentially, one of these could be a multiple win option if that's a steep enough drop. Or nothing's using it. You blow south, or it could be a north option too. We're starting with the maps, obviously because of the rain, but this is where you really need to get in there and find out where the deer really coming into these coves that mm -hmm. you know, if everything seems to be coming in here you're gonna open up more wind options yeah you're, you're talking right there you're talking a, oh man it's a that's you're talking 100 feet in in just a little while which but if you walk if some of these little like almost finger ridges and benches that come up they're just killed this is this looks like a, a likely entry yeah spot there's a there. there's a giant trail in there as you guys can kind of tell the rain kind of rolled in pretty quick here on us. Uh, today we're actually at a new lease to Grant and myself. Uh, me, Jared, and Gavin are down here, and this is Jared's first look at it. Um, Grant and I have been down here twice, I believe. We've deployed cameras about two weeks ago, and we walked it one time in the spring. Uh, we had this lease with a close friend of ours, and we're really excited about it. Um, as you've heard us kind of discussing, it's a pretty neat piece of ground. It's uh, pretty much one giant ridgetop ag field surrounded by a bunch of cover on all sides. So. It's a blank slate and uh, something, a place that I have zero hunting uh, time on and somewhere that's just going to take some time to figure out. So I brought Jared out. I've always, of course, us being good buddies and we're and colleagues, we talk about all of our farms, but I rarely get him out to look at some pieces. So curious to pick his brain as hopefully this rain quits <clears throat> and we get to walk around on. I've got some ideas on maybe potential plots and some stand locations already. So it'd be cool to put Jared's eyes on them and and to get to discuss back and forth using some of his experience and some of mine to hopefully come up with a solid game plan for this fall. 
Well, unfortunately, guys, the rain never let up yesterday. We waited it out for a couple hours in the truck, but it just would not relent. So we're back today uh, with a pretty solid game plan. Obviously, you heard us talking about a lot of different spots and a lot of different options for food plots and stand locations and whatnot. And a lot of that stuff is kind of going to depend on food and what we decide to plant and stuff like that. So kind of hunting those feed to bed to feed uh, patterns. But one thing that we were talking about, one thing I'd like some help on or some advice or, or Jared's opinion on is more of the rut stand kind of location stuff on a property like this. So that's what we're going to kind of focus on today. We'll, we'll cruise around and look at some of those coves and whatnot and maybe talk about seed and food plot stuff. But what I'm more curious about is where would you put yourself in that kind of November time frame when it's really on? Yeah, that'll be more fun anyways. I mean, you can do the hanging hunts and the coves and the, and the afternoon feed locations, but let's go find a let's go find a good rest spot and get it set up. You don't have to come back in uh, until later. Yeah, I've got a stand and sticks with me, so hopefully we can find a spot and get her hung. So Max and I came to this first little cove we wanted to look at. We wanted to see basically where this ditch kind of pinches down, it drops off into this ditch to see if that was kind of a natural pinch point that you could hunt. You know, go in in the morning, maybe a little bit after daylight, blow your wind out towards this field and you're hunting that rut movement where it pinches down. But we get here and it's a lot steeper than what we thought. So if it's so steep that they're not actually traversing that side hill, it's potential they come out in this corner and go right across the edge of the field to get to the next patch of cover rather than traversing that side hill they're going on the flat field part here it doesn't necessarily change the effectiveness of the spot it just changes the wind direction that you'd blow so if the deer walk in the field side now you're going to blow a northerly wind back towards the ditch back in whereas the ditch, right? you know it's just depending on what deer what side the deer are on so let's look at this trail Does it bend hard back to the wall? Mm -hmm. You've got on onto like a, a finger edge and then off into another. Are you on a trail right now? Yeah. Keep following it. Does it just cross the creek or does it? It just looks like it just keeps going up. I mean, it winds around, but it, I mean, I'll cross this little creek bed, but it's going to keep going up the ditch. Yeah, see what I'm saying is I don't think they continue to go anywhere in here. See, this is our pinch. That ditch that runs down. Yeah. All the deer go out into the field before they yeah, get there. Yeah, that's what I wondered. That's sweet. The tree selection right here near that washout, I'd almost lean towards in like oh. an afternoon, just get out a little bit, and then oh, you're yeah. just hunting this cove. Yeah. Let's, let's go over there for a potential morning rut spot. I do think no matter if we you hunt this or not, there should be a camera. There's got to be a scrape that opens screen. up, right? Yeah, where they're coming into the Where they're, ha they're forcing the field. Yeah, that's what I was saying to Gavin. There's plenty of good scrape trees, but one you should have one because you really won't miss much that's traveling this way. Bush honeysuckle taking over in here. A great oak tree right there too. This looks like a perfect little bedding ridge though. I mean, it's a little bit close to the field, but yeah, look at we are stepped off 50 yards. Look how thick it is. Yeah, our bed central right here, boys and girls. <laughs> Been laid in 364 out of the last 365 days. Another one right there too. This is a feature I really like is these heads of the ditch. Where it forces Which this up. really isn't even a head, it's just it's a head of this and then it gets deeper there. This is a killer crossing. I was looking at that cherry tree. So they're going around the head of that ditch and then they're going at that narrow crossing point. I think it would even be good on afternoon too. Coming in the field and then in the evening, you could drop straight down and walk it out. In the We're mornings, up. you probably don't want to. That's a tough climb, and you're going to be leaving your scent across this 
spot that you're hunting. What do you think? I like it. I like seeing, even though we didn't plan for it, I like seeing these ditches, the way they work and the way the deer cross it onto yeah. this little secondary knob. I like the visibility you're gonna have in here. Yeah, no doubt. Field and all of that. Toxic deal there. <laughs> I have a couple cameras out here that have been out for maybe just a week or so. And as you guys saw yesterday, I pulled one of the cars and had this crazy, funky double drop tine deer. So I took those pictures home and showed Grant and uh, another buddy of mine, and we came up with a name for him that you probably get a kick out of. Uh, we came up with Quasimodo, which is like the creature thing out of the hunchback of notre dame so i feel like that's a fitting name and crazy enough uh between just our break in that rain and this morning quasimodo showed up he sat in here and sure enough he ended up splitting his g2 on the right side and those drop tines have grown a few more inches so hopefully quasimodo sticks around it'd be super cool to be able to hunt a deer like that and hopefully even get some velvet footage of him this summer but what a wild deer, double drops, never had one with double drops, and he looks like he's still got a little bit to go, so we'll see how he finishes out. Well, we accomplished most of the goal uh, for today, at least. Found a tree in a, a killer spot, but unfortunately there was a big poison ivy vine that I didn't feel like spending my 4th of July swole up with it, so we cut the vine, uh, and it'll come back and hang that stand, but ultimately it was certainly a success for me. Yeah, it's... Uh... It was interesting, a good example of how important boots on the ground is too. Like we oh, yeah. obviously started with Onyx and still referenced Onyx the entire time. And that's kind of what, you know, gave us a broad area, but actually getting in here, there were some more or less erosion ditches Tom. right off the edge of yep. the field. And you know, it doesn't take much to reroute a deer trail. They're going to take more or less the easier route, but some of that stuff that doesn't show up on an aerial map, the smaller features, like those erosion ditches they just happen to be in the perfect spots where we didn't think they would be and they re rerouted the deer either up to the field or down to the bottom and that kind of eliminated the first two spots we looked at uh, there just wasn't enough to hunt in this situation the ditches actually played in our favor mm -hmm. and rerouted the, the deer into this little secondary knob that stays flat for a little while before it drops in the creek and what's cool about that what is it? It's 10 yards off the field is what the what the tree we picked out is. So you can blow a wind out into this field, um, but access, it's gonna depend on whether it's an afternoon or morning hunt. So what we were talking about is an afternoon hunt, you could come out, you could walk in the field, everything yep. drops off from the field. You can come across the field, hop in the tree, and you're, you're good to go. But getting out at night, it's actually gonna be best to drop down into the ditch you know, let the deer work past you out in the field to feed for the evening, then get in the ditch and take the ditch back to the truck. So a different exit route from your entry route, which is kind of a, a cool little aspect of hunting this tree, um, in my opinion. So yeah, overall, just, uh, I mean, you got a, a killer, killer property <laughs> for sure. I think I earned my buck tag for this piece anyway, this, uh, on today's job, but no, it, it'll be really cool to follow Max and Grant, especially with the relation to this property. Yeah, I think there's gonna be some big deer in here and this property will hunt pretty big too. Yeah, a lot of exciting things for this property on the horizon. We talked yesterday briefly about alternative options for food because likely can't afford and won't be able to, talking about leaving standing row crop, but there's always something to be done, whether it's just overseeing something simple like rye and stuff like that that we'll continue to talk about. That'll be a project likely that they'll see in the next couple of weeks, which will be Exciting, you know, I learned a lot today. I appreciate Jared coming out. Uh, probably my biggest takeaway from the day and one thing I was kind of realizing as we were walking around talking is that a lot of times in my head, if I'm thinking as a bow hunter about a pinch, I think I think too big picture, if that makes sense. Like I'm looking at this entire property and I'm like, all right, where's the biggest pinch? And although that does help and it's a great, it's a likely spot and a great place and I'll probably end up hunting it. I don't always have to think about hunting the pinch of a thousand acres but maybe i'm hunting the pinch of 50 acres so that yeah. was super unique and i think that's exactly what this is it might not be the best tree for a stand on the property but as far as one 
uh, that you can probably hunt continuously and give you give your some of your other spots a break. I think I get in the habit a lot. My first two, three sits are phenomenal and then it starts to dwindle and it's not the location's fault. It's my fault for coming in and leaving ground scent. Yeah. You know, you're gonna blow deer in and out every time you hunt. So this is super interesting and revealing for me as maybe thinking a little smaller picture too and the, the smaller scheme of things. So yeah, I I'm would excited. I would certainly agree with the statement. This is I can almost guarantee this is not the best tree in the property, best spot in the property, but you gotta have options. You gotta, yeah. you're hunting different deer, but you're also just spreading out the pressure a little bit. This is probably the best one in terms of having a little bit of everything uh, taken into consideration access. I think the best spot on this farm, unfortunately, is the worst access, but it you gotta always have, seems you to gotta be have that these way. other options too. So, yeah. no, thanks for having me. Having me out. I love looking at new ground and just, uh, It'll be, it makes it more exciting to be able to follow you guys and, and watch how you guys do, knowing that I've seen the person or the property in person. So it'll be yeah. fun. I appreciate the outlook. We're excited to be able to, this is one of those properties that's big enough that it really pays off to be able to be mobile. And one thing that, you know, Grant and I have always tried to do that. And so this will give us a really good opportunity to, to try to be mobile. There's a thousand different options and different coves to sit, whether it's early, late, yeah. when things are rocking and rolling. So that's going to be fun to take the hanging hunt set up Obviously, when you get tired of that, maybe have a permanent set like this one will be to give yourself a break. Yeah, for sure. With that being said, we wanted to key you guys in on a little sale uh, that Novix is putting on right now. Um, today is July the 3rd. July 3rd, and they are running a sale. Uh, you don't need any promo code or anything like that. They are running 17% off everything site-wide from now through the 8th of July. So it's not a little sale. It's their biggest sale of the year, and, and that's a pretty solid discount for everybody that is looking into uh, checking out some of their gear or maybe you know they just released that mobile uh, hunt ready system which is an awesome uh, single investment to get into that mobile style setup that we all use so much and appreciate so if you guys are interested check that out at i believe it's novixoutdoors.com Outdoors. and like i said no promo code required uh, but you'll save yourself 17 percent off everything site-wide appreciate you guys joining have a happy fourth of july and we'll see you next week <laughs>